So, hi there. Let's review the topic that was being discussed and that is all about the relationship between earthquake and then fault. So, a fault is like a fracture in the in our boat. So, whenever we move our body, this will be the part where you can experience a lot of pain. So, earthquake is like the movement of our body and the weakest point is of our body is when you have a fracture in your bone so what is now the relationship between earthquake and folks and why earthquake occurs so generally the stenosphere is believed to be involved in the movement of plate tectonics this movement involves rubbing together, pulling apart, or bumping off the plates. It creates mountains, volcanic activities, and even where the earthquake occurs. So how are we going to define earthquake? Earthquake is a sudden shaking of the ground that we feel when rock layers of the earth suddenly slip past one another to a new position and fault is like a fracture on the surface of the crest where the two blocks of rock slip like what you see in the animation the abrupt shapes of the rocks in the crust originates from below or earth's surface and rocks suddenly break when they rub and bump each other due to the energy suddenly released from the Earth's crust that create seismic waves passing through all directions, causing vibration in the crust. So now let us classify the different types of faults. First example is the active fault. This is the area along which all shallow earthquakes occur. So earthquake's depth depends on how deep the focus is. We have the shallow, the intermediate, and the deep fault. So these zones are believed to have exhibited evidence of strong, frequent earthquakes in the past thousands of years, and they are likely to exhibit movements sometimes in future so they tend to be most common at the boundaries of tectonic plates where different plates bump into or move away from each other the second type of fault is called the inactive faults this is the area which have not displayed any seismic activity for more than thousands of years and Due to the intricacy of earthquake activity, these faults may trigger bigger quakes, which were already proven by geologists. So remember, they are the main types of faults. We have so far a kind of um, normal or reverse, and even the what we know as the transform fault. So first, we have the deep slip fault. Considerably, it's a normal fault. Remember, according to activity, we have two. It may be active or inactive fault. A deep slip fault, first example, the normal fault. It is a fracture along which the foot wall moves up and the hanging wall on the other side moves down. So, Therefore, it is due to the tension forces or the pulling apart of the rocks which moves the crust vertically apart. And aside from that, the rocky crust takes up more spaces. It occurs in place that is relatively high or elevated, such as plateau and in a region where the crust is extended or where the little sphere shows an indication of being stretched. Another type is reverse fault. It is under a deep slip fault. This is the break in the Earth's crust, which is commonly formed in regions where the strong compressional forces push the rocks together. 
they are mopping the grass vertically apart. This time, the hanging walls moves up while the foot wall moves down. The rocky grass takes less space. The rocks with older fossils end up directly above of those with younger fossils. It occurs along the coast of many regions nearby the Pacific Ocean and it is also known as a truss fault if the fault plane is inclined at an angle of 45 degrees, 10 to 40 degrees. The last type of fault is the strike slip fault, or also known as the transform fault. It is formed between two different plates due to horizontal forces moving the layers of the rocks parallel to the fault plane. So the blocks of rock on the one side or on one side of the fault slide past the other. Seismologists believe that more violent earthquakes usually occur in this faults. The movements in this fault do not make lifts or fault scarves because the blocks of rock are not moving up and down relative to each other. The best example of the transform fault is the Sunrise fault. In, is, in, it is the most famous which is located on the continental margin. So let's take a look how movements along fault lines generate earthquakes. An earthquake originates somewhere between the crest and the mantle. The asthenosphere, which is semi-fluid, builds up. Pressure and temperature tends to flow and deform. Look at the animation. So remember that the pressure in a greater amount of temperature somewhere happened here between the crust and the mantle. And look how it happens. So the entire crust extending to the uppermost portion of the mantle is now called the lithosphere. Rocks are quite stronger. They are more rigid. Above the stenosphere is where the lithospheric plates are thought to float. The upper portion of the stenosphere is where rocks move at waves of the formation and become brittle. and they break, faults are now formed. So these movements of rocks trigger motion, motions of Earth's crustal plates. And these plates are very slow but continuously moving and because of the friction and the rigidity of the rocks, they cannot flow past each other causing distress to build up. When the rock layers reach a level that exceeds stress threshold, rocks then break and accumulated stored energy is released, causing an earthquake. Sometimes, rupturing rocks release massive amounts of energy resulting to devastating earthquakes. And 80% of most earthquakes occur alongside the edge of the continental. These continental plates are found under the continents and are thicker than the oceanic plates that are found under the ocean. And people living near where the edge of the plate are located with, will be able to feel the bump and rub off edge of these plates by the movement of the ground on one or both sides. So these movements are associated with the changes that happen in Earth's crust, such as the formation of continents, the mountain, roof valleys, ocean basin, and other through diastrophism. Because diastrophism comes from the Greek word diastrophe, which means distortion, and it is the process where the action of forces form. The large scale deformation of Earth's surface through the mechanism of rock movements within the crust. A fault is one of the effects of diastrophism. And to detect it with the use of the seismometer. So when an earthquake generally occurs, 
Based on the forecast of geologists, most of the earthquakes generally occur with a minimum magnitude, making them too weak and less likely to be experienced by people. Like in the animation, people don't really feel it, or this earthquake seems to be um, not felt by those people talking inside the room. However, there are some areas where earthquakes are felt more often, and these places are called earthquake belts. They are very destructive. Like this one in the animation, once this great earthquake happened, building will collapse. Another example from the movie, possibly to happen, of course. And remember, when the earthquake strikes on the water or bodies of water, it tends to form a tsunami. Like in Japan, this is the best example when after an earthquake, there is a great flood and that is coming from or what we know as tsunami. So some identified countries, the Philippines, Japan, China, Canada, New Zealand, North and South America, Chile, Russia, Indonesia, Mexico, and Antarctica are somewhere here in the Pacific Ring of Fire because this Pacific Ring of Fire do have most of the active or most 75% of the world's dormant and active volcanoes are found. So I hope you learned something from the review. Remember all the terms like how are we going to define the earthquake and then defining the fault and the different types of faults according to their activity whether they are active or inactive and the different types of faults such as uh, depth slip fault like the normal and reverse or another type is a strike slip fault the best example is the um, transform fault so the relationship between the earthquake and the fault how the earthquake occur and where the earthquake occur thank you very much for listening bye bye